You'll notice that I've got a big tub of Lyle's golden syrup behind me. Um, I, I, even I'm not that greedy, though. Um, some astute readers of this channel and viewers may know why I've got it. For others, prepare yourself for a bit of a, a biblical reading. I won't read the whole chapter, don't worry. Then went Samson down and his father and mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his mother or father what he had done. I'm not surprised. Uh, they might not be very pleased about this. <laughs> And he went down and talked with a woman, and she pleased Samson well. I think they were probably doing a bit more than talking from the sound of it. And after a time, he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. They have some bloody mighty strange bees in that area. And he took her off in his hands and went off meeting and came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did eat. But he told them not that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. I wonder what they would have thought if he told them. Might have been some slightly said about eating that. So his father went down onto the woman, and Sabbath had made there a feast for so used the young men to do. Yes, yeah, so these feasts in Timna where people regularly chomp down there with, <laughs> with honey from inside lions. Probably another geezer going down there with a bit of jam from a leopard. Or what did you bring, uh, Boaz? I've got some peanut butter from inside a koala or some whatever. And it came to pass when they saw that they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said unto them, well, "I will now put four a riddle on to you. If you can certainly declare it with me within the seven days of feet and find it out, then I will give you thirty sheets and thirty change of garments." But if you cannot declare at me, then you shall, you shall give me 30 sheets and 30 change of garments. And uh, they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. And it came to pass the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband that he may declare us unto the riddle, lest we burn thee. And thy father's house with fire, have you called us to take what we have? Is it not so? And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou hast but, dost but hate me and love me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle upon the children of my people and hast not told it to me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother, and I shall tell it thee. <laughs> and she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lay sore upon him. And she told the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said to them, If you had not ploughed my heifer, you had not found out my riddle. And, he, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon and slew thirty men of them, and took their spire and gave charge of garments unto them which expanded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. Pretty exciting times down there in Ashkelon. I'm I'm familiar with this stuff from childhood, but and it's obvious the lion is symbolic anyway. But if you ever look on the front of a Tate and Lyle pack, you will notice there is a a dead lion on there. At first, if you don't look closely, he just looks like a little bit of a cuddly cuddly lion, but. He is actually supposed to be a dead lion, and he is supposed to reference this part of scripture. Apparently, not everyone's too amused with it nowadays. You'll notice that underneath um, Abraham, Lyle, and Sons, it says, out of the strong came for sweetness. This is because the Scottish businessman Abraham Lyle had strong religious views and was fairly strongly uh, Christian and fairly strongly evangelical. It's now going to be replaced by this rather funky abstract lion. Honestly speaking, I'm, I really don't see anyone, why anyone is getting so terribly excited after, after so long, to be quite honest. If it's been on there for, uh, you know, getting on for, 
you know, 140, 150 years, it really shouldn't be, it's not really a big matter to get excited about. I don't think anyone is saying from the front of, from buying a can of Lyle's golden syrup that you should go out and run out and uh, butcher lions. I, I don't recall any correlation of these two activities. Even better yet, it's been left on the bigger tins. It's only been taken off the smaller stuff because Lyle's know very well that this kind of image of the lion is so iconic and such an iconic thing that if they took it off altogether, it would ruin the brand. But I just thought it was a funny example of one of the last sort of Victorian sort of brands where they still have those kind of images. You'll find quite a few Victorian brands use these kind of images lifted from the Bible or lifted from sort of um, patriotic imagery. Even Lyle's whole golden syrup tin look with all that fancy scroll work is probably one of the last things that looks like that. There's not much else on the shelves that looks like a tin of Lyle's golden syrup anymore. I actually like it as it is and would prefer it to be left alone myself because I think it's it's not a big deal.